Hi there everyone and welcome to Buy Now Sell Now weekend. We've got lots lined up on the show. Despite the fact that it was a truncated week, this promises to be jam-packed. Let's run you through some of the stocks that we will be discussing up ahead on Buy Now Sell Now weekend. Can India up for discussion? We also have a viewer query lined up on JSPL. Dilip uh, Sadhwani's portfolio, that's what we'll be discussing up ahead on the show. Time to bring on board our experts, Gaurang Shah, VP Geojit, BNP Paribas Financial Services. We also have with us Mr. A.K. Prabhakar, Head Research, IDBI Capital, who now joins in on the show. Lovely to have you both, gentlemen. Start off with our first query for the day. This is from Dilip Sadhwani. He's an investor in Mumbai. And uh, let's check in on his first query on Cairn India. I hold 640 shares of Cairn India with the average price of 218. My time horizon is 5 years. Shall I add more to bring the average down or simply hold it? Okay, let's find out what exactly he should be doing with his holding in Cairn India. For now though, the stock has seen quite a good rally this week. But run us through Gaurang, how this one stacks up vis-a-vis -vis some of its peers in light of what's going on with crude oil prices. And do you think that it's a good time to add more? Well, Avan, uh, for this particular company which is engaged into the oil exploration and upstream company, uh, things are a little bit more different than compared to the other upstream stroke oil exploration companies. The reason being of the talks of merger of Cane India with Vedanta. And that has been there uh, in the public domain for quite some time. The issue over here is what kind of swap ratio that is going to work out in case if this merger has to go through, whether it is going to be favorable or unfavorable. Now that is the, something that will come to know when that will come to know in the future. Having said that, as a disclosure, we do have a hold recommendation on Cane India. Uh, the gentleman has got a very very long term time horizon of five years, and in that five years time span, expect an uptick which we are already witnessing in crude oil to gain momentum in case if there is any sizable uh, production cut from OPEC or any major disruption, distortion in the global supply pipeline of crude oil. Uh, so he can average definitely maybe 25-50% or even more if he has the investable capital. See to it that you bring down your averages sub 180-175. Uh, this is because our target price is at 201 under the present uh, present scenario and circumstances. In case if things uh, emerge positively and the numbers start looking positive, then we might revise it upwards. Okay, there you have it. It's a good long time horizon, so you can look to add on as well. But do remember to keep a target of about 201 on Cairn India. Moving on then, uh, let's get in a technical view going as well. And Mr. Prabhakar, on the charts, what would you advise? Do you think that there is potential to add more? Do the technicals back the solid fundamentals? Good afternoon. Um, the stock has been correcting from uh, 386 to 106. Now, and it has been correcting from uh, 2014, June 2014, and uh, uh, we have never seen any recovery. This is the first time we are seeing a recovery, and the recovery has been almost 34% in this month alone. And uh, you know, if we take a minimum retracement of even 40%, it comes to 215. So there is a possibility the stock uh, might rally to 215 to. 246 in near term but long term could be even better now but uh, my advice would be you know averaging is not a good uh, concept you know uh, because uh, the stock has been continuously correcting uh, buying strength is more important and the uh, investor has a time horizon of five years when you are looking at five years horizon uh, it is not necessary to average if it is a good stock it will fetch you profit if it is not a good stock, at least at certain point you will get your cost where you have to exit. Now, averaging is not a good theme in technicals. Okay, there you have it. The technical call also is that you can look to stay invested in Cairn India. Let's move right on away from this heavyweight from the oil and gas space to heavyweight in the metal space. And Dilip also has a query on JSPL. Let's listen in. I hold 2400 shares of Jindal Steel and Power with an average price of 118. My time horizon is 5 years. Shall I add more to bring the average down or simply hold it? 
Okay, what is the advice on JSPL? Does one hold with a time horizon of the next five years? Now remember, Jindal Steel in focus as well as there's been news of late with respect to JSW Energy, which is in final stages to buy a thousand megawatt plant of Jindal Steel and Power. Valuations are being talked about close to 5,200 crore rupees. And this is in Chhattisgarh. Uh, certainly going to bode well for JSPL, which has been struggling with a fairly high debt burden, Gorang. But uh, what's the view on what Mr. Sadhwani should exactly be doing with this investment with a long-term time horizon? Well, first of all, a whole recommendation as a disclosure on my part. Uh, he is holding quite a quantity of 2,400 shares, again at a level of 118. Uh, the stock is trading currently at, I think, about 60-65 rupees. Uh, seen some bit of a recovery and yes, on the fundamentals, there have been a lot of negativity, not only with respect to the financials, but also in terms of the news flow on the counter uh, and, of course, on the company. Uh, having said that, uh, yes, you could definitely average out, uh, not at current levels, at lower levels, maybe some quantity, uh, bring down your cost. Uh, our target is at somewhere close to about 95 on uh, Jindal Steel and Power. And it always augurs well when a company tries to hive off certain assets on the balance sheet to power down debt. Now, it remains to be seen to what extent uh, this particular company is successful in bringing down the debt and possibly throwing some positivities in terms of earning usability. So, as of now, hold on. You've got a big quantity. If you can average some, you could definitely do that to bring down your average. Okay, that is the word coming in on JSPL. Hold on and uh, looks like you can achieve a target of close to 95. You can even look to buy more. Let's understand the technicals as well. And uh, Mr. Prabhakar, uh, talk a little bit about the longer term charts. How is JSPL fed in comparison to some of its other metal spares? And what's the view when you look at the stock from a slightly longer term view? The stock has made a high in 2010. The high has been 796. From there, it has been consistently correcting. In the last almost six years, we have seen the stock hit a low of 48 rupees. So from there, it has seen a mild recovery. I think you know, the recovery could be even larger from here. But you know, compared to other metal stocks, this has been a gross underperformer. Now, the, there are other metal stocks like Hindalco, Tata Steel, which are uh, you know, relatively outperforming this stock. So it is not a stock where comfort is going to come. But I think worse for the stock is almost over. Maybe another one, two years, you know, it can uh, consolidate around these level between you know, 50 to 100 rupees. But later, there are possibility that the stock can move up and target even 225 in the next uh, three to five years. So I think the worst is already there in the prices and uh, we see for a stock which is almost corrected for last six years, we need a consolidation for two years. So you have to, you need to have a patience. If that patience is there, I don't think any problem is there in the stock at this level. There you have it. Patience is a virtue and one that you should definitely be adopting when it comes to your investment in JSPL. So on the fundamental as well as the technical side, the verdict is out. You should stay invested. I hope we were able to help you out, Mr. Sadhwani, with both your queries. We zip into a quick break right here on the show, but up ahead, we have Dhananjay V's portfolio. That's up for discussion. Welcome back. Still tuned into Buy Now, Sell Now Weekend. As promised, we've got our portfolio segment lined up. So let's take you straight to it. Today we'll be discussing Dhananjay Vishwakarma's portfolio. He is a private employee, 28 years old. He lives in New Delhi and has got a time horizon of the next two to three years in his portfolio. Time to nail it down to individual stocks that he holds. Start off with Andhra Bank. He's got close to 80 shares at 95 rupees. There's also Apollo Tires in the portfolio, 50 shares purchased at 166 bucks. 50 shares of Care India as well, 260 is where he's bought that. The stock is currently trading at 158. So far, he's losing out on all investments. 
ONGC, he's got close to 60 shares at 3.39. PFC features on the list, it's close to 85 shares, bought at a level of 193 rupees. PNB, 30 shares at 192 bucks, that's where he's purchased it. Moving on then, some more mid-caps in the form of Syntex Industries, 80 shares bought at 112. There's SBI once again, so lots of PSU banking stocks, 70 st shares purchased at 254. And finally, from Metals, it's Vedanta, 75 shares at 223 rupees. Gaurang, let's get straight to assessing the stocks in his portfolio, although it may have a mix of large and mid-caps. Unfortunately, Dhananjay isn't performing very well on his portfolio. We'll start off with the first name, Andhra Bank. What do you think he should do here? What's the advice on next up, Apollo Tires and 166, as well as Care in India? So I think broadly on the portfolio, yes, it is a mix of uh, large and mid-cap, but unfortunately, he's bleeding quite bad on the entire portfolio. So my advice to him is on most of the stocks, he needs to hold on to them as well as average them out because the current uh, CMP or the current market price is at a very low level compared to where he's invested. So I'll go on with the portfolio that he's had. Uh, on Andhra Bank, we have a whole recommendation but you definitely need to average it over here with a target of 112. Stay invested on Apollo Tires. We saw some traction on the tire manufacturing companies throughout the week and fortnight back. We have a positive coverage. Uh, hold on to it with a target of 217. On K in India, as we were discussing earlier, uh, you need to stretch your time horizons to more than two or three years, keeping in mind the lower crude oil prices and the realization, and of course the merger news, which is an overhang on the counter. Here also you need to hold on to it and uh, maybe average it out. Uh, you need to watch out for a target of 201 on K in India. Well, that's the call coming in on the first three stocks in the portfolio. Let's move on, talk about heavyweight ONGC. What's the advice at 339? You know, because he mustn't be the only one, uh, you know, who's in this kind of a position. What about other investors on ONGC? Let's talk about as well PFC, what's the advice here? And PNB from the PSU banking lot, is the pain likely to continue when it comes to earnings? 192 is where he's fetched the share. So, Avan, firstly on ONGC, things are looking a little bit better compared to Kane India. The problem is that it is a PSU and with the divestment target that the finance minister has set aside in the budget, there could be a case in point wherein ONGC could be included in the divestment list. Of course, it will depend upon at what pricing uh, the government wants to dilute the stake. As of now, hold on to it. You can definitely average. We are looking at a target of 306 on ONGC. On Power Finance Corporation, you got in a little bit higher level. If you can average, you can definitely average, otherwise hold on to it with a target of 359, that is Power Finance Corporation. On PNB, we have a reduced recommendation. And the point you mentioned, um, our sense is that the fourth quarter and the last quarter could definitely spell out a little bit of more pain in terms of provisioning, GNPL issues and restructuring. Uh, if you can switch from here on pullbacks, uh, you can definitely look at investing in ICIC Bank. Over there, we have a target of 364. Syntex is what he has in his portfolio, a mid-cap favourite, but losing Sheen for now. 112 is where he's bought it. There's also SBI from the PSU banking lot at 254. And the final stock, Garang, that we'll discuss is Vedanta. What do you advise on these three names? So on all three, we have a buy and a hold. And my advice is you can definitely average. On Syntex Industries, we have a target of 144. So hold on to it and average over here. On State Bank of India, we have a positive coverage. We have a target of 256. You definitely need to average over here as well. And the last one, Vedanta. Well, you need a longest time horizon. Hold on to it and an average. We have a target of 170. On the metal pack, uh, uh, Avan, our sense is that uh, possibly the bottom is in place. You could see some volatility. Uh, keeping in mind the recovery in the commodity market uh, metal pack and of course the demand supply equation, uh, there could be a case wherein from a two year, three year plus kind of time horizon, uh, Vedanta could definitely see much better higher levels. Okay, that's the call coming in on what to do with your entire portfolio. And in fact, let's walk you through all of the recommendations that have been made by Gorang. First up, start off with Andhra Bank. Look to hold and even buy more. Look out for a target of 112 on this investment. Stay invested then in Apollo Tires for targets of 217. A good stock to have in your portfolio indeed. Care in India, a target price here, 201. 
Buy more of ONGC and hold on to your current investment. 306 is the target price. PFC, it deters the case. The thumbs up there, 359 target. Look to sell out of PNB. Clearly lost out quite a bit here. ICICI Bank is a preferred option for targets of 364. Meantime, stay put in Syntex for a target of 144. Hold and buy more of SBI. And ditto is the case with Vedanta. Look to hold on, buy more shares of Vedanta for targets of 170. And let's run you through a very important disclaimer that this is only a model portfolio. You must consult your individual investment advisor before taking any investment decisions. Quick break right here on the show. Come right back for some wealth creation ideas and trading picks. Buy now, sell now weekend, and let's uh, connect with our technical and fundamental guests to talk a little bit about the market action. A truncated week, nonetheless, and there was quite a bit of gusto at the start of the session. We paled off when we came to Wednesday, and by the time we shut shop, at least 7,700 was intact. So, a rally on the index. Most of the big global events seem to be out of the way. But let's talk technical levels. And Mr. Prabhakar, would 7,700 be a, you know a level to reckon with? Is this here to stay or just? A short-term rally that may just fizzle out. We've almost corrected from uh, 9,119 till uh, 6825, for which this is the best month in the last one and a half years. You now we have seen a rally of almost 10 percent, and you uh, know, in my sense, I feel 7,800 to 7,900 is where market can see a temporary top and post which I expect a correction. So you now use these rally to reduce position because. Now, normally a market which is almost corrected for 13 months doesn't make a bottom formation in one or two months. It, it is a time process. So it might take five months to eight months where you will see a correction again and you know, maybe we will make this, break this low of 6800 and go to 6600 or 6300 also before a bottom formation can be made. So it is a time process which we have to wait for. So use this rally to reduce position, increase your cash levels because you will get more opportunities and volatility in the market is years to stay. So I think you know, in the next one or two weeks we might get to the level of 78 or 7900 where it will be an opportunity to reduce position. Okay, that's a view coming in. But let's also talk about, you know, what the outlook is when it comes to the bank nifty as well. What kind of levels are you mapping out over here? See, Bank Nifty has uh, made a gap up. So, with uh, with a stop loss of 15,670, now target of 16,250 is possible. Now, and uh, the gap up level was made three days before. So, uh, after making a gap up, it has sustained three days. So, on Monday, I expect some rally in Bank Nifty. Okay, time to nail it down to individual ideas then. And Gorang, let's start off with you. What makes the list from a fundamental viewpoint? What stocks should investors put their money into? So, if you have recently heard about the defense uh, outlay and uh, the FDI and defense, there has been a lot of positive news which has been emerging. We've identified one particular stock uh, which is uh, quite... Uh, active into the communication equipment uh, category and that's Astra Micro uh, has a fair uh, amount of exposure and experience uh, and willingness to explore the defense FDI and they have also laid down the blueprint for the same uh, with a longer term time horizon we are uh, advising to buy into Astra Micro uh, with a target of about 180 now, primarily, yeah, only advice to all your viewers and investors is, Avan, that if you're looking to play out the defense FDI play, then you need to have at least two, two and a half year plus kind of time horizon for the positive returns to emerge in the earnings and thereby reflect upon the share price getting elevated at a higher level. So the first one is Astra Micro uh, with a target of about 180. 
and with a with a disclosure over here that in case of these positivities on defense FDI translates into tremendous amount of earnings visibility, then we might revise it upwards. The second one is from the consumption side, the stroke FMCG category, that is Bajaj Corp, uh, has got a fair amount of products under its uh, belt and these products have got a tremendous amount of shelf presence as well as customer royalty. Uh, our sense is that uh, the focus of uh, budget in uh, semi-urban stroke rural area as well as propping up the spendable uh, disposable income at an individual level in the agri-community side, we believe that this is one particular play from the consumption theme that should augur very, very well. The earnings were a little bit of mismatch over the last couple of quarters, but we see positivities emerging on fallback of this theme that I've just mentioned. With a target of 510, you can definitely look at buying into Bajaj Corp. This uh, investment idea is more with a one, one and a half year plus kind of time horizon. Okay, there you have it. Astra Micro looks good from a fundamental standpoint as well as Bajaj Corp. Mr. Prabhakar, what is it that makes the list when it comes to technical top ideas? Yeah, see when I pick stocks, I like stocks which make uh, all-time high. So now one is Ramco Cement, uh, where the target is 565. Now it has a 12-month time horizon. The next pick is Ashok Leyland, where it has again made an all-time high this week. And I think uh, no, uh, the target is 118. And uh, this month alone it has rallied 20%. So the target could come even faster, maybe in a... In next 15, 20 days also, the target is possible. Okay, that's the call coming in from the technical viewpoint. Thank you so much then, Mr. Prabhakar as well as Gaurang for sharing with us your top ideas. We Thank wind you. it down on this leg of the show. We'll catch you same time next week. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.